Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta and my guest today, Taslima Nasreen, a person whose views you may agree with, you may sometimes strongly disagree with, but one thing you have to say, even if you are a critic of her, that she is blessed with enormous courage. If I may say so, Taslima ji, reckless courage. Thank you. <laughs> so, because you've taken on everybody, you've taken on the religious establishment, not just in one country, but I would say bigots in more than one country. Yes, it is true. And Because religious extremists are against women's rights, against human rights, and uh, they are against freedom of expression. So because I support freedom of expression, and I have been fighting for freedom of expression for a long time, and also I am a human rights defender. So I have to fight against religious extremists. And human rights, in your view, uh, do not follow any <laughs> distinctions of religion. I don't think that any religion actually um, supports human rights. Because of religion, you know, women are oppressed and um, freedom of expression is violated. It's because of religion. You know, if anybody, any religion allows persecution of people of different faith, if any religion keeps women in slavery, and uh, I cannot accept that religion. So are all religions the same in these areas? Are, do all religions oppress women and curb human rights? I think so. All religions? All religions. So, so not one re particular religion is not worse than the rest? Yeah. Yeah. Some religions are uh, worse than Such other as, religions. Give me examples. I suppose if I see, look, if I look around, I see that Islam um, oppresses women more than other religions. But, you know, once upon a time, Christianity also oppresses, mm. oppressed women a lot. But afterwards, they separated <coughs> religion and state. And it is needed everywhere, but that the was separation over, of religion and state. That was over 150 state. years yeah. of Christianity. So Islam also needs to be reformed. Also, Islamic countries need to separate religion and state. It is urgently necessary. And who will do it? I mean, who will bell that cat? <laughs> we are trying. We are secular humanists from Muslim countries are asking or demanding the secularism in Muslim countries, strict separation between uh, religion and state. Is that possible? Why not? It was not possible also in Christian countries, but okay, now yes. they have proved that it was possible. And you think in Islam also this would be possible? Yeah, Islam would be uh, oh, peaceful religion if, uh, you know, if uh, they do not take any laws from Quran and uh, if they separate. So, so, uh, so treat the state. Quran just as the word of God on religious issues, spiritual issues, and not follow, not draw the laws that govern people's lives from there? I don't think that Quran is the words of God. Hmm. The Quran was written by men, of course, because if Quran was written, written by, by, men, yes. by God, it would have been, you would not have uh, got so many injustices and inequalities in the Quran. You know, in Hindus, in Hindu countries also, and in Christian countries, in um, other countries, uh, in European countries or in America, you know, they fought against their uh, extremists. And also, freedom of expression was allowed in those countries. So it was possible um, for them to separate state. So this is what, what you're seeing in India right now, these killings uh, over critics of Orthodox Hinduism, over beef eating. You think this phenomenon has gone up or these are just aberrations? You know what I like about India again, even though I, sometimes I get, I'm sad because of those killing, uh, you know, if you eat beef or if you are free thinker. But so many people 
here in India protesting against right. that. So you, know? you, you saw this procession in uh, Bangalore? Yeah, and also so many uh, columns, uh, the columnists yes. uh, have been writing against right. it. And they are Hindus. They are Hindus. You know? So the, the Hindus are protesting against Hindu ex extremism. Right. Muslims, you know, there are many secular humanists among Muslim, in Muslim community, they have been protesting against the Hindu, sorry, Muslim, Muslim, uh, Muslim in uh, uh, extremists. Not, not only in India, it, everywhere. In Bangladesh, so many, so many, uh, but they've you know. Been, but they've been targeted. They have been targeted, but still it is not stopped. They right. still, they have you know, continue uh, criticizing those uh, uh, Muslim extremism extremists. And also they are criticizing Islam because Islam, Islamic um, <laughs> laws and Islamic uh, um, systems are not good for humans. You know, these laws were created 1400 years ago. And why should it be applicable now in this 21st century? But I, sometimes I get sad. Leftist and liberal people in India support Muslim extremism and uh, they criticize uh, uh, Hindu extremists, but they do not uh, they do not criticize Muslim extremists when they when they you know uh, you know go against freedom of expression. So, so what 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 is there? Or when they commit crimes. Right. What is their motivation? You think? Liberal and left critics in India, who you criticized hmm. for attacking or criticizing rightly Hindu extremism hmm. or Hindu conservatism conservative they are, they, they but are making they are making a uh, big mistake they think that uh, they are and uh, Muslim extremists enemies are the same so, so they can't be doing this that you you take a position on one side but not on the other no I, I am against all kinds of fundamentalists right. because you've you've even said uh, uh, very interesting point you made uh, in in the context of atrocities on Rohingyas mm. that it's a stereotype it's an unfair undeserved stereotype that Buddhism is also a fundamentally a peaceful religion no the people who believe in Buddhism we see that they can be violent they can be because violent. Uh, you know uh, hundreds of people were killed by uh, Buddhist monk and uh, uh, Rakhine Buddhist people right. and those uh, stateless people. I didn't know how Rohingya Muslims lived in uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in, uh, in Myanmar, Myanmar because they had no access to education, <coughs> they had no access to medical facilities, they were uh, they denied you know citizenship but and they were attacked by Buddhists. The people who believed in Buddhism, the monks, it's unbelievable. But now we know that if you are uh, in the power, if you are powerful people, and um, whatever your religion, you can be violent. So you can, you use, can be... use religion to justify your violence? Yeah. Because we've seen Buddhist, violent Buddhism before. We've seen yeah. it in Sri Lanka. Yeah, we have seen in Sri Lanka and uh, Japanese, Japanese are Buddhists yeah. and what they right. did in Second, Second World, World War. War yes. Mm. yes, so, so, so any, any and, religion can be used for violence. Yeah, people can be violent whatever their religion yes. is. But religion gives them justification and the fuel. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, so you know what I say that religion is passed on through indoctrination. Right. So if you stop indoctrinating children, then you would see that religion would be extinct soon. Right. But you know, I am not religious. I am a secular humanist. But are you God-fearing? No, I am an atheist. I atheist. don't believe in God. Does somebody but, fall sick? When your favorite team is at a crucial moment in the game, do you pray to somebody? No, no, of course you not. Don't. Of course not. Right. And um, if you, but, but, you know, I defended Hindus in Bangladesh because, you know, and also I protested <laughs> against the 
against uh, the Muslim fanatics who destroyed their temples. temples. Right. Even though I don't believe in religion, I defend those people who are oppressed. Right. I defend Muslims when they are uh, oppressed in Palestine. I defend Christians when they are oppressed in Pakistan. I defend uh, you know, Hindus when they are oppressed in, in Bangladesh and other countries. And similarly, uh, as you said just now, that oppression of Rohingyas in Myanmar as well. Yeah, they are really oppressed and uh, more uh, 400, almost 400,000 people are in, Bangladesh. are in Bangladesh. So Bangladesh Prime Minister showed uh, her generosity uh, by uh, giving, uh, by, you know, offering them shelter. So it is very good. So it's should, very good. So now the in, I mean, crucial issue in the Indian debate, should India give them shelter? Should India push them back? Into Myanmar. You know, India is such a great country and India is a major power in this region. Uh, India has 1.3 billion people, so right. 40,000 people doing that. You know, 40,000 is nothing, nothing. actually. So, so in this uh, uh, time of crisis, I think that India sh can show it, its generosity and also tradition that India always but sheltered uh, different uh, people from right. outside. So I think that it is, uh, I, India decided to throw them out, but I would, I would not say India must so shelter them. them. I should say India sh can reconsider right. its decision. To, to, to throw them out. Frankly, I don't think uh, throwing out will happen. I think it was political posturing because this, this is not India's culture to throw anybody yeah. out. Anybody who, who has a risk, imminent risk of being shot or raped mm. or, or yeah, tortured. and also Myanmar uh, would not take yeah. them. Take you know. them back. So, uh, so in this, uh, you know, uh, Europe took millions of uh, Syrians, uh, Syrians you know. Uh, so in this region, India as a great country can also sh give generosity. them shelter. Yeah. But the fear is, or the fear mongering is, that they are raw material for Islamic extremism, that lashkar e Taiba, Pakistanis, ISI will get in, and they will it's become... It's not fear mongering, it is really a fear, right. I think so. Because some of, uh, some Rohingyas are really attached with the uh, extremist uh, uh, terrorist groups. So we have to think about it. So I think that if they live in India, and um, if Indian government actually watch them closely and uh, uh, maybe it would not be uh, easier for them so to keep join. them in secure camps, yeah. away from outside influences. Yeah. But don't so throw for them, them out. actually, they, in in Bangladesh or in Pakistan, you know, it is more uh, it is uh, more possibility that they would uh, join the extremist right. group because those India. are majority Muslim country, right. but not in India. So right. I think that in India, if they live in India then it is uh, better for them they would not they would not be able to so it's work better for with them the to be in india so that they don't go to isis yeah they're not exposed <laughs> because to it is easier for them to go to isis if they're living if they live in bangladesh pakistan or saudi arabia right. or any other muslim countries but still i think that the uh, you know muslim countries never uh, actually um, you know, they don't shelter Muslims, oppressed Muslims, but they talk about Islam and Muslims a lot. Well, I, I would say that there's one exception, although it's a qualified exception, but it's an exception. Pakistan sheltering a lot of Afghans. Yeah, but uh, I mean, you, you know, the Syrian people, they are Arab people, right. but Arab, how many Arab countries open their door oh, for Syrians? And then not. Europeans open the door for them. Right. So. In India should not learn from those rich Muslim countries. They should learn, should from, learn Europe. from Europe. Europe. Yeah, yes. that, that, that's a very, very good point. 